Hey everybody, this is Matt Shu from Upright Health. I wanted to share a funny little find that I done found in a study that was done in 1999 that was looking at acetabular uh, retroversion and ant <coughs> excuse me, antiversion. So this was actually a study done by a couple of researchers in Münster, Germany. It was Tunis, Dortmund, and Heineke uh, who participated in this. And uh, basically they were looking at how the placement of the hip sockets would affect um, the range of motion of the hip joint. And so what they were looking at was, number one was figuring out how to properly measure the placement of the socket. So the socket is known as the acetabulum. So they're looking at how you would even determine where, you know, whether it's antiverted or whether it's uh, retroverted. Uh, and then they were looking at how that affects uh, people in terms of pain and other, other issues. So there were, there were some interesting things I found in the study. And one was that um, the way that he, these guys set up the measurements to determine antiversion and retroversion was actually based on a completely false assumption, which I'm hoping, and I need to consult with some radiologists about this, but I'm hoping is no longer the way things are done. Because the way um, they set up the measurement for antiversion and retroversion was to basically bisect the pelvis in an x-ray and then uh, basically um, from that bisect line basically go perpendicular and assume that everything should be symmetrical and that if, that if you know the they don't, if both sides are not symmetrical, then you actually have a bit of an issue and that, that symmetry would help you determine exactly where, um, where one hip might be antiverted and one's maybe a little more retroverted. It would help you figure out whether one's going to be good or bad or what have you. The thing is, studies that, this study was done in 1999 and I know subsequent other studies unrelated to FAI have already found that the shape of your pelvis is not symmetrical no matter how much you want it to be, it's just not. So measurements that assume that there will be symmetry are just by default going to show you that there's a problem where there may actually be no problem. But this is a study that is done for the sake of orthopedic surgery and orthopedic corrective surgery. So um, that's what you get. So you're looking at bones. Now there is uh, then a further piece of information that I thought was extremely interesting when they're talking about how to take measurements. So they actually talk about how it's uh, really vitally important that you make sure when you're taking your x-rays that you make sure that somebody is not in anterior or posterior tilt. Now this is super interesting because it's pretty hard to figure out what exactly neutral is for somebody's pelvis, given that the pelvis is not symmetrically shaped, given that uh, standing, sitting, and lying down all tend to put your pelvis into different positions. Um, but what they mention is when you get a person set for the x-ray, you actually need to make sure they're not anteriorly tilted or posteriorly tilted because if you, um, uh, where is this line here? Basically, the um, they say the anterior tilt reduces acetabular antiversion. So what that means is uh, if the pelvis is tilted this way, then the femurs are going to be set back like that, right? So we're thinking about the sockets, right? So antiversion, sockets are up this way. Retro, uh, retroversion is back this way. So these guys are saying when you have an anterior tilt, the socket, it's like having the sockets pointing back, you're retroverted. When you have a posterior tilt, then the sockets, the acetabula, are going to be more antiverted. So let's cover that again. I'm going to show you from the other side just in case it helps. If you're anteriorly tilted, the sockets are going to tend to be more retroverted. The acetabula will be more retroverted. If you are in posterior tilt, the acetabula will be more in an antiverted state, right? The acetabula are pointing more forward. Reading between the lines, this is super, super important. 
Because one of the things that would cause your femur to run into your acetabulum is having retroverted acetabula. So if my, if my acetabula are more retroverted, there's less clearance for my leg bone. So if you think about it with shoulders, shoulders and chest are actually really good analog for your hips. If my shoulders are back here, right, really retroverted, I can run, I start running into my rib cage. I run into some bony things that stop me from getting a full range of motion. If I am antiverted here, whew, I can come all the way across. No problem, no impingement. What they're basically suggesting is that the tilt is going to obviously affect the clearance you have between the femur and the acetabulum. So if you go into a more posterior tilt, you actually get more clearance for the femur. And that's something you can do muscularly by turning on your butt muscles and making sure they're active through a very large range of motion and basically all the time. So a lot of the videos that I've posted about femoral acetabular impingement are based off personal experience dealing with my own um, impingement issues and my severe impingement issues and um, based on what I've seen working with clients. Typically, it is very difficult to wake the butt up enough to start making a big, big difference all the time. But what I found is that typically within the first month, you're able to wake the butt up enough to notice that the butt is really the key or one of the major keys to helping reduce the impingement symptoms. So number one, the butt muscles help put the pelvis into a more posterior tilt. And then number two, the, the vector of pull with the glutes actually helps position the femur more posteriorly. Right? So it actually gives you a little bit more clearance. I mean, basically puts the socket, puts the ball into the socket correctly, even as you move up into hip flexion. So I was really surprised to see this. It's a very interesting, interesting little observation that they have when doing these measurements. And it's something that you can put to your advantage by turning on the right muscles. What I find is most people are locked, locked into an anterior tilt right they have the quads super 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 tight throws them into an anterior tilt which means now you have retroverted acetabula your butt muscles are really really weak because you've been sitting on them all day and now you're stuck here and then you go to flex and you are stuck even just pretending right now i am literally stuck here and i feel i pinch right in the front of my hip this used to be as far up as i could flex and that's why I had trouble getting in and out of the shower. But really, if you get me into a more neutral state without that weird anterior um, tilt, no problem. I can come up and you'll notice I'm not losing back position while doing it, right? Whoop. No problem. But in the past, I was definitely in anterior tilt and uh, stuck. So, if you're dealing with hip impingement, this is definitely something I think you should think about. Figure out ways to start turning the butt muscles on. I've got videos up, check them out. And remember, pain sucks, life shouldn't.